So good afternoon. Um, my name is Alicia Torres. I'm the Director of Communications um, at Child Trends. And on behalf of the Family and Provider Teacher Relationship Quality Project, or FPTR2, uh, we'd like to welcome you to this webinar. The project offers unique tools for measuring the relationships between families and the providers, the teachers who care for their small children. And as you know, these relationships are key factors in promoting positive outcomes for children and families. The FTPRQ project is funded by the Administration for Children and Families Office of Head Start and the Office of Planning, Research, and Evaluation. This project has been led by Westat and by Child Trends. Westat is a research organization that for more than 50 years has specialized in statistical design, data collection, and management, and research analysis. Child Trends is a nonprofit research organization that for more than 35 years has produced and disseminated research, data, and analyses on programs, policies, and issues that impact the lives of children and families. So throughout the webinar, if you have any technical questions, please submit them online. You will see a box on the right-hand side of your screen where you can easily submit questions to our team, and we will get back to you. This is the same place where you will submit questions for the panelists at any time during the, the presentation. We will queue up the questions and present them uh, to the different panelists uh, once all the presentations have been completed. So today you're going to be hearing from a few panelists. Um, you will first hear introductory remarks from Laura Horde, who is a social science researcher and analyst at the Office of Planning, Research, and Evaluation in HHS Office of Administration for Children and Families. She has served as the project manager of this program in this office. Then you will hear from Kristen Beigel from the Office of Head Start. After that, after the introductory remarks, you'll hear from four of the researchers who have led and conducted the research and development of these measures for this project. In the order in which they will be speaking, you will first hear from Dr. Lina Guzman, a senior researcher and director at Child Trends with expertise in measurement, development, among other areas. She has served as a co-PI for this project. You will then hear from Tony Porter, a, from Early Care and Education Consulting. Formerly, she was a senior researcher at Bank Street College of Education. Tony's research focus has been in home-based child care, conceptualization and measurement of family provider relationships in early care, as well as evaluations of ECE programs. Thirdly, you will hear from Dr. Monica Ramos. She is a research scientist at Child Trends and project manager for this project. Monica has her doctorate in applied development of psychology and specializes in research on early care and education programs, family engagement, and cultural sensitivity. Doctor, and finally, you'll hear from Dr. Kwong Kim, who is the project director for this project. Kwong is a senior study director at Westat. Um, his research experience is in survey research, early education research, and implementation of large-scale data collections and data analyses and reporting. He holds a doctorate in education research. I will now turn it over to Laura for introductory remarks, and then Lina Guzman will kick off the presentation. Hi, everyone. Um, as noted, my name is Laura Hart. I'm with the Office of Planning, Research, and Evaluation. Um, and I'm just going to provide some opening comments and um, then pass it over to Kirsten Beigel with the Office of Head Start. Um, so while um, family engagement has been a cornerstone of Head Start since its inception, a focus on family engagement across early childhood education programs has more recently gained prominence, for example, within state QRIS systems and as a focus for Race to the Top grantees. Um, about five years ago, a family, family engagement was beginning to gain attention, OPRE, where I work, in collaboration with the Office of Head Start and the Office of Child Care, held a two-day meeting for researchers, policymakers, program staff to discuss what were the next steps in the area of family engagement. And with everyone meeting together, the consensus was that what was really needed was a good measure of family engagement. Um, it was also determined that not all programs had the same expectation or requirements for family engagement. However, 
good family provider relationships, relationships were something that all programs needed um, to have um, to show family engagement. Um, serendipitously, at that time, um, the Office of Head Start had funds um, that they wanted to put towards building better measures um, of the quality of early care and education programs. And seeing the need highlighted by that meeting, um, OPRE, which is, again, where I work, and Office of Head Start used the funds to create um, the Family Provider Teacher Relationship Quality Project, or FPTRQ. Um, so one thing we were very lucky about was OHS, or the Office of Head Start, was really interested in broadly supporting the development of a measure that could be used across early childhood education programs and not just for Head Start. So the FPTRQ measure, which you'll hear a lot about, were developed to be used in center-based and family-based child care centers as well. Um, and I will let um, Kirsten Beigel, who's with the Office of Head Start, and she's also the lead and the head on the National Center of Parent, Family, and Community Engagement, um, discuss her role in this project. Thanks. Hi, everybody. So glad you could join us. And hope you're as excited as we are about um, this measure and learning more about it and how we can use it in programs and systems across the country. You know, we do know that regardless of sort of what kind of program you're involved with or how you're thinking about family engagement or um, what you're building in your states or programs around family engagement and with families, that relationships really are the common denominator for all of us. And so this is really exciting work. And um, while we know that relationships are sort of the foundation for, for the work around family engagement, it's really um, easier said than done. So, you know, as staff or um, administrators or leaders in programs or policymakers, you know, we all have our own sets of beliefs and attitudes and perspectives we bring to the table when working with families. And families, likewise, have their own sets of perspectives, attitudes, and, attitudes and beliefs. So unpacking some of that, understanding it, and figuring out sort of the, um, you know, how we can put our best foot forward and developing the shared responsibility we have for supporting learning and development of young children. Um, this measure, I think, can help us with that. And also the National Center that, uh, that Laura mentioned is also, we're very well poised. And it's kind of nice because we have a lot of great material on relationship-rooted practice uh, as part of our National Center. And, um, and we'll have more coming out in the next year. I think that can support folks who are interested in using a measure like this and programs who are interested in developing their relationships with families in the work. So anyway, without further ado, I will pass it on over and I hope you enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Kirsten. And again, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're delighted to be here uh, joining you virtually to share with you the new Family Provider Teacher Relationship Quality Measure. Um, before I go into what we'll be presenting, I just want to take a moment to thank our project officers, Laura Ford and Nancy Margie, for the careful oversight that they've provided to us throughout the project, as well as Kirsten Beigel um, for, the, for the guidance that she's given to us that we hope has made this tool um, both useful and valuable to Head Start and Early Head Start. And I'd also like to acknowledge my colleagues at Westat and here at Halterns, as well as Tony Porter who has been um, a true partner to us throughout this project. The measures that you'll be hearing about today are the culmination of roughly four years' worth of work. They were developed through a multi-step and iterative process, which you'll hear more about in a minute, and which we believe led to a rigorous and reliable measures. Um, let me take a moment to just walk through with you, walk through um, what we'll be covering today. Um, I'll begin with a brief introduction to the project. We'll then um, describe the development of the conceptual model that guided the development of the measures. Um, we'll also talk about um, the surveys and how they were developed, the psychometric analysis that um, was conducted um, that resulted from a field and pilot study that were carried out. We'll then also discuss the uses of a measure as well as the development of a measure specifically for family services staff in Head Start and Early Head Start programs, as well as the limitations and implications of the measures. Um, as, as you may have already um, uh, guessed, that this project was carried out through a partnership from, um, with Westat and Child Trends, sponsored um, by ACS 
um, Office of Head Start, and OPRE. The purpose of the project was to develop measures that could be used by researchers, policymakers, and practitioners to assess the quality of family provider relationships in early care and education settings for children from birth to five years. More specifically, a goal of the project was to develop measures that were applicable across diverse early care and education settings, including Head Start, and that were appropriate for use with racially, ethnically, and economically diverse populations. And to this end, we developed five separate measures depending on the respondent and target relationships, including um, first, the provider and teacher um, survey, which measures their relationships with their families that they serve. Second, a uh, survey, a measure of between parents, uh, of parents that looks at the relationships between um, themselves and their child's provider or teachers. Third is a measure for directors about the features of the centers. And fourth is a measure for family services staff about their relationship with the families that they serve. And last is a measure for parents about their relationship with their family service, services staff member. Please. So why do we need a measure of family provider teacher relationship quality? Well, as you already know, 60% um, of US children um, under the age of five spend time regularly in early care and education settings. And we also know from research that children's providers and teachers can lead to positive outcomes such as school readiness, um, positive family engagement, and also strengthen the home program connection, which is an important contributor to child success. Yet, there is no currently single measure that incorporates all elements of provider-teacher relationships such as knowledge, practice, and attitudes, which Tony will be talking about in a minute. In addition, um, while there's a variety of measures currently available, um, there's no measure that assesses all aspects of family provider teacher relationship quality. And many of the measures that are available have not either not been tested or are not known to be applicable for economically and racially diverse populations. Additionally, not many are available in Spanish. In short, there's a need for a new measure of family provider teacher relationship quality that includes all elements that the empirical little literature suggests are important and that are applicable to two diverse populations. The new and more comprehensive family provider teacher relationship quality measure helps to fill a critical gap um, with a new effective measure for use in Head Start and early Head Start programs, as well as family daycare, childcare, and center-based programs. It provides or informs programmatic and policy directions for measuring quality in family provider, teacher relationships, and in family engagement, and contributes to the knowledge base about associations among specific elements of effective provider-teacher facilitation of strong relationships with families. So let me talk a little bit about the multi-stage process that we undertook to develop these measures. Um, first, as you see, we conducted an extensive literature review that helped to guide the development of our conceptual model that ultimately guided our measurement. Um, we also conducted focus groups with parents, providers, teachers, as well as family services staff. And that was to make sure that the conceptual model matched what our target population thought were critical elements to include in measures of family provider teacher measures. We also consulted experts um, who provided us feedback throughout the life of the project. And we also conducted a very extensive item review of existing measures that helped to either lead to the identification of items that we could use or items that we needed to adapt, tweak a little bit, as well as gaps that um, existed where we needed to create items from scratch. We also conducted three rounds of cognitive testing with parents, providers, and teachers, as well as directors. Um, and two rounds of cognitive interviews with family services staff and parents working with family service staff. Um, and those cognitive interviews were designed to help us better understand how well our questions were working and to help improve the wording of the questions. We also conducted a pilot and field study in the cities, in multiple cities across the country that then generated data that we could then use to psychometrically analyze um, the data so that we can see how well the measures were, real, were um, um, standing up. And next slide, please. 
So how can the um, FPTRQ measure, who can the FPTRQ measure be used by? Well, first, um, state and local administrators could use this to inform the development or revision of quality rating and improvement, um, QRS, family partnership indicators, as well as rating systems, and to better align professional development systems competencies. Uh, practitioners in professional development systems could also use it to identify or monitor the quality of relationships to revise and focus or develop training or coursework to address specific areas of weakness or areas where improvement is needed, and also to understand program progress in relationship building skills over time. Lastly, researchers could also use it to test the associations between provider-teacher attitudes, knowledge, and practices, as well as specific child and family outcomes, and to serve as a reliable and comprehensive measure of family-provider-teacher relationships. And now I'd like to pass it over to Tony, who will talk about, um, who will describe our conceptual model and how our measures were developed um, from that conceptual model. Thank you, Lena. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Lena. Uh, as, uh, as Lena just indicated, we did the conceptual model was based on an extensive lit review of the theoretical and empirical literature on family provider teacher relationships from a variety of fields, including early care and education, K-12, social work, mental health, and early intervention. In this model, we integrated common and unique elements from three broad perspectives on family provider teacher relationships family-centered care, parent involvement, family engagement, and family-sensitive caregiving. Uh, the common elements of these perspectives include an ecological view of child development, a focus on child outcomes through direct and indirect pathways, a focus on peer and social supports for adults as well as adult outcomes, a strengths-based approach to relationships with families that focuses on families' unique resources and assets, and the centrality of family provider teacher relationships. These perspect three perspectives also included unique elements, the importance of family capacity and empowerment, a focus on strong school family partnerships and shared responsibility for children's learning, and an emphasis on provider teacher responsiveness and sensitivity. So what you have in front of you is a very elaborate conceptual model. And you can see that there are two-way arrows. That indicates that the model is bidirectional. That is, families may be more likely to become engaged and involved in their children's development and learning activities when they feel supported, understood, and empowered by programs and providers. At the same time, providers and teachers may become more sensitive and more responsive to the needs of families as parents become more involved and engaged in their programs. This model is structured as a logic model in an effort to summarize what is a very complex issue. Each construct has the potential to be dynamic. There's also no temporal assumption. Because the purpose of the measure, as Lena indicated, is to inform assessment and monitoring of ECE programs, the central focus of this conceptual model is column two, effective provider-teacher facilitation of family-provider relationships. The elements here in this second column are the ones that the empirical literature suggests are associated with positive child, family, and provider outcomes. The elements, which I'll talk more about in the next slide, are grouped into four constructs, which are in the orange band. One is attitudes, providers' and teachers' perceptions or beliefs related to interactions with families. The second is knowledge, specific information providers' teachers have about the families they're serving. The third is practices, how providers' attitudes and knowledge are translated into their interactions with parents. And the fourth is environmental features, the tone, physical environment, organizational, and cli organizational climate, and program level resources that support and promote family relationships. Cultural responsiveness, as you see at the bottom of the column, is assumed to cr cut across all of these constructs. The model also indicates characteristics or factors that may influence the family provider teacher relationship, the first column, intermediate out child and family outcomes, as well as provider teacher, teacher outcomes, the third column, and effects on children, families, and providers. Next slide, please. So here are the four FPTRQ constructs with their individual elements. There are four attitudes elements. 
all are captured in subscales. These elements include respect, commitment, sensitivity to the needs of children, parents, and families, and intrinsic motivation for, for work, openness to change, a willingness to alter normal practices in order to be sensitive to an individual's child, family, or parent's needs, and a willingness to be flexible, and understanding context, having an appreciation for the broader context in which children's development and family lives are situated. There's only one element in the knowledge construct, and as I indicated, that's family-specific knowledge. There are four elements in the um, practices construct, communication, responsiveness, that's flexible, flexibility, collaboration, uh, joint goal setting and decision making between the provider, teacher, and the parent, and family-focused concern, a communication that demonstrates interest in the family as a unit. Now, there are five elements in the environmental sub in, in the environmental construct. One is welcoming, and that in thank you, and that includes uh, participation in program planning and development. Another is communication systems. A third is culturally diverse materials. A fourth is information about resources, and a fifth is about peer-to-peer -peer parent activities. Lena. Lena? Okay, sorry about that. Um, we had a little bit of a technical glitch. Um, oh, sorry about that. We had a little bit of a technical glitch there. Um, so the first of the five surveys is the provider teacher survey. It's intended to be used by early care and education providers, um, and that includes the, the wide array of early care and education settings, including um, center-based programs, um, family child care, Head Start, early Head Start programs. Um, it can also be in, used for pre-K settings. However, we did not explicitly test it in public preschool programs just because of the difficulty of getting into those programs. Um, it asks providers about how they work with parents of the children they serve and includes about 60 items measuring different aspects of the relationship. And the measure takes about 10 minutes to complete. And to give you a sense of the types of questions as well as the parallel that we've tried to maintain across the different surveys, we included a sample question for each of the surveys. The sample question for the provider teacher measure is, since September, how often have you met or talked to parents about the goals parents have for their child? Next slide, please. So the parent survey, which is again intended for parents of children ages 0 to 5 in early care and education programs, we focus these questions about, we focus the questions on how parents work with their child's provider or teacher. Um, one thing that is worthy of note is that this measure is available in both English and Spanish. It includes again about 75 items and also takes about 10 minutes. And a sample question here for the parent measure is, how often does your child care provider or teacher work with you to develop strategies you can use at home to support your child's learning and development? The third measure, which is the director measure, is asked of directors and centers or the owners of family child care programs. Um, it's intended to collect data about the care environment and program policies things that the teachers or providers don't really set or may not even have the information about. And it really helps to provide context about the types of features that, help, that can help to either promote or um, serve as challenges to, to facilitating the uh, provider, teacher, parent relationship quality. It includes 10, uh, 50 questions and also takes 10 minutes. And you may be asking why do all these um, measures with different numbers of questions still take the same amount? Well, for here, for the director measure, um, it takes a little bit longer because they often have to consult with records to answer some of the questions, or they may need to do some math in their heads and a lot more complicated recall than um, is expected of the parents and the provider. And now I'm going to talk to, I'm going to turn it over to Monica, who will talk about the family staff, family services staff measures. Thank you. As Lena mentioned earlier, a major goal of the measures is to be used across diverse settings, including centers, family child care, and Head Starts and Early Head Start centers. 
Originally, the provider teacher measure was developed to be used with Head Start Family Service staff. However, we learned early on from focus groups and cognitive interviews that the provider teacher measure items weren't applicable to family service staff. Now, given the important role that family service staff play within the Head Start mission, such as helping parents reach their own goals, supporting families by advocating for them, and connecting families to community services, we decided that we needed to develop separate, specific measures for family service staff. And in addition to adapting provider teacher measure items that worked for family service staff and developing new items where gaps existed, we also consulted the literature and interviewed Kirsten Weigel from the Office of Head Start about the family service staff roles and responsibilities. We also conducted two iterative rounds of cognitive interviews. The family service measure is intended to be used by Head Start and early Head Start family service staff. It asks respondents questions about how they work with parents of children in Head Start and early Head Start programs. It includes 113 items, 18 of which are demographic items. It should take about 15 minutes to complete on average. And a sample item is, since September, how often have you been able to follow up with parents about goals they set for themselves? The parent family service staff measure are for parents to complete about their Head Start and early Head Start family service staff. Um, please note that we use family service staff when referring to the role in general. However, when we're referring to a specific person in the measure, we use the term family service worker. The parent family service worker measure asks respondent questions about how they work with family service staff. The measure includes about 76 items, 10 of which are demographic. It should take about 10 minutes to complete on average. And the sample item is, since September, how often have you met with or talk with your family service worker about how you're progressing towards goals you have set for yourself. Now we envision that the family service staff measures can be used concurrently with the provider, teacher, and director measures. And in order to gain the full perspective of the family service staff and parent relationship, we think it's best to administer both the family service staff and parent family service staff measures concurrently. Because the family service staff measures were not included in the pilot or field studies since we began their development about halfway through the project, these measures were not included in the psychometric testing. So for future work, we think it would be best to test questions in a study to establish reliability of the measure. I'll now turn it over to Kwong, who will describe the field study. Thank you, Micah. The field study of the FPTRQ was conducted in six cities across the country in spring 2014, all year this year. We first sent out pre-notice letter to programs informing them that the FPTRQ field study will be conducted in the area, uh, and we may be contacting them for uh, participation in the study. Uh, once the project directors agreed to participation in our study, we have made arrangements with program directors uh, to schedule site visits and for their um, most convenient time. And uh, uh, also, we want to uh, we talk to provider teachers and parents. Working very closely with directors, uh, we uh, contacted the provider teachers and parents face-to-face, uh, -face, and we hand out our measure to them on the right uh, that spot. Uh, after four long months of data collection effort, uh, we were able to recruit diverse range of programs and providers and uh, parents from uh, center-based Head Start, early Head Start programs, as well as uh, family based uh, family based child care centers. Using the data from the field study, uh, we were looking at the uh, reliability and the, the, how the, the concept, the, the, mod, the, the measures are constructed the way that we initially designed. 
based on the conceptual model. Uh, the, in the item, each of the items were grouped under three broad constructs of knowledge, practices, and attitude, and subscales were uh, built under each of those. We uh, conducted conformative fact analysis to see how each measures are constructed and to see how subscales are uh, formed in, within each uh, construct. Reliability uh, test was we used Kronberg Alpha to measure internal consistency of each for each subscales and uh, in rule of thumb, the reliability measures for subscales uh, 0.70 or higher are uh, considered to be uh, strong. And uh, we will show you next few slides that how we were able to uh, uh, do the analysis and find our reliability measures. This slide is the reliability by program type, center-based program, home uh, head start, early head start, and family child care. And this here you will see three constructs, knowledge, practice, and attitude. And you will also see uh, seven subscales in the uh, provider teacher measures. Most of the subscale reliability scores are pretty good. Some are at 0.90 or higher and at a 0.70 and but as you see the last line the the commitment of scale has show uh, lower reliability may uh, estimates than compared to others and so we look at more closely to see what uh, what's happening in those uh, the commit commitment subscale for three different program types. And what we found was that most of the uh, provider teachers answer three or four in the item, four items uh, included in the commitment. That means uh, agree or strongly agree. But still, there are other uh, uh, provider teachers also rated one or two so it, it's not always, you know, put in the one uh, or two uh, response rate, but it has some uh, uh, broad distribution. Uh, next slide, you will see uh, reliability by program type for uh, parents measure. Here, three same construct, knowledge, practices, and attitude, but we have eight uh, subscales for parents measure. And uh, you will hear, see here that many reliability estimates for uh, subscales for different three different types of programs show very, very high. Oh, most of them are 0.90 or, or higher. And uh, just the family focused concern uh, subscale has probably the lowest here, but they are still uh, 0.7 or higher in the uh, in the parents measure. As Lena mentioned earlier, parents measure has both English and Spanish version, and so we looked at the reliability estimates for uh, Spanish and uh, English version of the parents measure. And as you will see, the reliability for Spanish and English measures for all subscales are very, very good. And uh, it's kind of, we were very, very happy to see this uh, very good reliability from our measures. Next one is the director measure uh, that we did not, we do not have uh, uh, grouped them into subscale the items in the director measure but we map them to environment constructs in the construct uh, conceptual model and contain a, a environment and policy checklist of yes or no items 
for the director survey uh, measures. So we do not have a reliability uh, report information for director measures. Next one is uh, we would like to present how you can use the FPTRT measure. Before you want to uh, use the FPTRT measure, you want to download the measures from the OPRD website and make hard copies. It is very important to develop a systematic and linked measure ID system because you want to know uh, the provider and teachers are linked to their program and the parents are also linked to the uh, right provider teacher within the same program. So it will be great to put the ID or put a label on the space of, uh, on the uh, measure provided in the back of the a hard copy. Next one is administering the FPTRQ measure. Um, we were trying to make the measure as easy as possible so that it can be used in very uh, in variety of programs uh, for many different uh, purposes. It is self-administered measures and respondent. Uh, names not needed to be on the measure. We put this one so that we, you know, some confidentiality issue can be uh, honored. Uh, and uh, we also thought that it is good good to collect the uh, measure other than uh, the, the provider and teacher, uh, so that the parents will be able to report their uh, ratings without any fear or concerns. And uh, uh, in the same place, we, uh, the parents can be given an envelope so that they can put their completed measure uh, sealed and return to the program director. Scoring the measure is another uh, important thing I believe you all want to know. Um, we develop an Excel scoring sheet for director, provider, teacher, and parent measure uh, so that you can use. And the, the, the scoring sheets are available on the OPRU website. Uh, using this scoring sheet, all you need to do is put the uh, correct ID, ID and enter the uh, major responses in the spreadsheet. And it will automatically calculate subscale scores for you. Uh, major responses in Excel can be at, uh, analyzed by using statistical package uh, like SPSS or SAS. And there are some uh, reverse scored items in the measures. And uh, those are automatically uh, cut, uh, scored reversely in the scoring sheet, but using SAS or PSS or other statistical package, you may want to do, uh, record those things in your syntax file. All this information and more useful information will be a, uh, found in the user's manual that will be available uh, later in, the, uh, in this fall. Next, Monica. Thank you. I'll talk a bit about the Family Service SAS Construct Assignment. As you may recall, when Kwong discussed Construct Assignments earlier, this was based on conformatory factor analysis of the field data. Because the Family Service SAS measure were not included in the field study, we made our recommendations for Family Service SAS Construct Assignment for all items based on conceptual model and parallelism with other measures. However, these construct assignments have not been confirmed through psychometric analyses. On this slide, you will see the number of items assigned to the family service staff measure, then the parent family service staff measure with in parentheses. The constructs with asterisks denote the constructs that were not included in the parent family service staff measure. Now I'll turn it back to Kwong, who will discuss study limitations. Study limitations, like most other projects, for measurement development, for, or any other uh, purposes, we do have a 
few limitations in this product. First one is the field study was not uh, a rep uh, nationally representative sample. And uh, all of the Head Start and all Head Start programs were run by community organization. And small number of all Head Start programs were included in the field study. The PTRQ measure data have not been examined with any outcome data yet. So we do not have conducted predictive validity study. Also, no concurrent validity study of the FPTRQ measure has been con uh, conducted at the moment. And uh, due to difficulty measuring cultural sensitivity directly, it is measured uh, indirectly across subscales. Tony? Tony? Now it's your turn. Thank you. On mute. Uh, now we're going to turn to some of the potential uses of the FPTRQ measures in the real world. Next slide, please. Next slide. Thank you. Okay, so there are a variety of ways in which Head Start, early Head Start administrators and directors could use these measures. For one, they could conduct self-assessments of teachers and family service, for services staff's attitudes, knowledge, and practices. And they could also use the director survey to conduct self-assessments of the program environment. Another way to use the survey would be to assess parents' perceptions of their relationships with providers and teachers and family service staff, and to use those parent surveys in conjunction with the teacher surveys and or the family services staff surveys to assess the fit between the perspectives of the staff members in the program and the parents of their relationships with each other. These measures could also be used to identify areas um, that are that should can be addressed through continuous improvement efforts and um, in family relationships over time. And the measures can be used to supplement the existing Head Start pa parent, family, and community engagement framework self-assessment. Next slide, please. For policymakers, as Lena indicated at the at the outset. Uh, the measures can be useful for refining or revising quality rating impro and improvement system standards and indicators, especially because some research suggests that those indicators lack variation and lack specificity. Um, they can also be used in Race to the Top Early Learning Challenge grant pro efforts to assess family engagement alongside of existing instruments, such as the Strengthening Family Self-Assessment or in addition to those instruments to capture aspects of quality and family provider relationships that may not be included in other instruments. And finally, um, the FPTRQ uh, measures could be used to improve alignment across professional development systems, which identify those area expect expectations for what pro provider teachers need to know and do. Uh, course offerings and trainings that are intended to help the providers and teachers obtain those skills, and the QRIS indicators that are intended to rate providers on those skills. Lena? Thank you, Tony. Um, and so just, I, I'd just like to briefly sum up um, what the FPTRQ measures provide, and just really briefly so that we have some time for questions and answers. I think that you, I hope that you come across, that you walk away um, with the perception that, um, or the belief that um, the FPTRQ measure provides a really strong and reliable tool with which to measure family provider teacher relationship qualities. That's a measure that can be used, again, across diverse settings, including um, Head Start and Early Head Start, but also center-based family child care and again, as I mentioned earlier, pre-K, although we did not explicitly test it in um, pre-K. It can also be used for diverse settings, as some of the psychometrics that um, Kwong presented to you, which um, showed really strong properties in both English and Spanish, but also across diverse um, uh, multiple features of the sample, or multiple characteristics of the sample. 
and it's also a very flexible tool. Um, so it can have um, measure multiple constructs separately or to, or um, together, um, and it can be flexible for use in either as as a standalone measure, but also as part of a existing monitoring or evaluation process. And with that, um, I also wanted to provide some in the next slide some of the um, resources that are currently available on family provider relationship quality that came out of this project, including our literature review and measures review, as well as other measures and um, other tools that are currently available. And then in the next slide, we also have the, the link to where you will um, be able to find all of the products that come out of this project. Um, we'll be releasing the measures as well as the user's manual um, later this fall, um, and those will be available on these websites. And we also plan to, um, when they become available so that you don't have to be checking the website, um, we will send a, an e-newsletter or, or an email to all those who have signed on to the webinar to let them know that the measures and documents have been released and that where they can find them. Alicia? Great. Um, thanks to all the panelists. And so now we will um, start to ask some of the questions that you have sent in. Um, I just want to, several of you have asked, um, you know, whether these slides will be available. And we've answered you um, a privately, those of you who have been asking this, but just so that everyone knows, um, the slides will be available on the Child Trends website under our research, then early childhood development, and then FTTRQ. So um, a, you will be able to see those, and those will probably be posted sometime later this evening or today or tomorrow. Oh, okay. So in the next day or so. Um, so now, in addition to that, several of you have sent in questions. I'd like to begin with one that was sent in regarding um, the, whether or not providers from public pre-K programs were also involved in the focus group. And so um, this is Lena, and um, the uh, providers in specifically in pre-K programs were not included in the focus group, again, because of just the difficulty of getting um, permission from school districts or states or local um, government agencies to um, do research in, pre -K, in public school pre-K programs. So private pre-K programs were definitely included. Um, Center-based programs were included. But if it was part of a school district, it was really difficult for them to get included. OK. Um, thank you, Lena. Can oh, and I'm sorry. And the one thing that I would add, though, is that there's no reason um, theoretical or based on other research that we would have to suspect that these measures would hold up less well in a pre-K setting. Yeah. Um, okay, so for Tony, um, what aspects of family partnerships do the FPTRQ surveys capture that are not already measured in other surveys? Well, I think as Lena said and um, alluded to and as I said earlier, the FBTRQ measures capture all of the elements that the empirical research suggests are associated with effective provider facilitation of relationships with families. So some of the distinctive features that are not often captured in other uh, assessment tools are openness to change in the attitude construct, responsiveness, which specifically relates to providers flex and teachers' flexibility with families, in the practices construct, peer-to-peer -peer parent activities, which relates to uh, social supports for parents, which is um, in the director's survey. So those three. And also, um, I would say there's the family-focused concern, which is not necessarily captured in other measures. And this is based, just to, uh, to sort of strengthen my response here, is based on a review of two commonly used assessments for family provider relationships, as well as um, the analysis that we conducted in our measures review, and finally, a comparison between the FPTRQ constructs and elements and the national professional standards. Alicia? Yes. 
Um, thank you, Tony. Um, okay, for Kwong, yeah. um, what is the time commitment that you anticipate it will take to complete the surveys and assess the results? I think we estimate about 10 minutes on average for respondents to complete each measure, as Lena mentioned earlier. But it could be faster, but that is kind of on average. And uh, I think entering the responses to the uh, Excel scoring sheet will take maybe like five to ten minutes, depends on how you are efficient in entering such data into an Excel spreadsheet. But once it, they are entered, it will be uh, calculated at no uh, time. So I think it will be. It, will, it won't take too long, actually, in most cases. OK, great. Um, the other question, Kwong, that came in, I think, for you would be, how can the survey questions um, be incorporated into other types of surveys? That's a good question. Um, I think if you are conducting a large-scale uh, research or so you may want to take only a few subscales from the FPPRQ measure. I think that's very uh, a good way to kind of get the information you like to uh, use from the FPPRQ. But also, uh, you can uh, use the multiple or add to F as the FPPRQ survey uh, to in a large battery uh, that you are already uh, developing. So it may not take long, actually, but also it is good, actually, to take. We suggest that it is good to uh, use both, uh, not both, actually, all three, uh, director, provider, teacher, and parent surveys so that you will be able to get uh, rich and comprehensive information of uh, family, provider, teacher, uh, quality relationship. Great. Thank you, Kwong. Um, we got a really interesting question in that may be beyond the scope of this project, but that you guys might have some thoughts on. Um, it's basically a, somebody wrote in saying, with all the cuts in education funding in Michigan, uh, will this information being gathered possibly help secure more funding for schools in the future? Um, I, I think that's an interesting question. I, I, don't, I think it's beyond the scope, but maybe, uh, Tony, you might have some thoughts on this? I do. I'm not sure whether this would help um, help the questioner obtain additional funding, but I think certainly there's a great deal of it, grow, great, a great deal of interest and growing interest in family engagement in uh, early childhood programs and in school as well. You may or may not know that there was a White House meeting on this this summer. Um, there is a there's a strong interest across several departments um, within the federal government in in terms of family engagement, and also there's a real value in understanding um, the quality of relationships between family families and providers and teachers, um, and teachers specifically in the public schools. So to the extent that you could co use these measures to collect data to indicate that there are strong aspects of these relationships or and or weak aspects of these relationships, um, you could demonstrate that this is an essential, really a crucial element in supporting children's development, which is what we're all about here. And so it might be useful in that way. In addition, I think that you could probably use these measures to um, inform your QRIS, which I know is not related to your school funding, but would also strengthen this cross-system effort in which I think we're all engaged to enhance outcomes for children and families. Great. Thank you, Tony. Um, one more question for you. Uh, will time to administrate this program affect time for learning in class instruction? Oh, I, I think that we've said this uh, repeatedly, and I think one of the strengths of these measures is that it takes about 10 minutes for the respondents to complete them. I mean, Kwan keeps saying about it. It is about, depending on 
how fast you read. So even if you administered a measure to um, to a teacher um, or a provider, 10 minutes is not going to take significantly away from her time with the children. For parents, it could be some something where they could take it home and then bring it back in a sealed envelope. So maybe they would do it when a child was asleep or something like that. And directors, it's only 10 minutes of their time. They could do it while they're having their coffee in the morning. So no, I think the, 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 the short answer to that one is, no, this really shouldn't take away time. And besides, the benefits of understanding the quality of the relationships in a particular setting and, and the effort that you might want to conduct to improve those areas that warrant attention will more than outweigh the you know, 10 minutes of time per respondent. Great. Um, and I think we have time for just one more. Um, a question came in, were the surveys tested with the Head Start population? Well, yes, absolutely. And that that is one uh, information I reported earlier. We uh, have contacted Head Start programs and all the Head Start programs, and uh, we got very good response from them. And so Head Start teachers, parents uh, are participating and providing their response to help us develop and finalize the survey of uh, these measures. Uh, also, however, uh, we weren't able to have as many uh, early Head Start programs as we wished, but uh, we still have about a few Head Start, early Head Start programs in the uh, field study sample. Great. Um, well, again, this is Alicia Torres. I wanted to thank all the panelists that have participated and all of the people who have logged on and uh, asked questions. Uh, 